be a verbal warning first. We'll go out, please turn the water off when we make for stage two or three, whichever it may be. Continue to do that. We'll issue a written warning. This is my recommendation. I'd have to deal with it. So verbal then written then issue. Correct. Okay. That's my Just preference. Please. How do you time to comply? I prefer that too. That's my recommendation. These guys come back. That's what we do. Okay. And let's know too, I'm asking Paul about the commercial because it's a little bit different in that they don't have both a trash pickup day. And so it's important that they're restricted to Wednesday and Saturday. And they come to Saturday. Wednesday and Saturday. Wednesday and Saturday at certain times. So that's kind of how we control the commercial deal. But you'll get, if you do go to this, you'll get complaints from a lot of your citizens about seeing the commercial. People violate it pretty frequently. It's more detailed in the ordinance of how we do it. The recommendation for conservation plan again, uh, continue the education, meeting the goals that are in the plan. If you don't have a copy, I believe you have a copy, or if you do not, it's on the web. If not, I can give you a hard copy. Focus education, these are things that are coming up. Uh, Typical users, athletic fields, LISD, and there's a one or two little private fields here and there that we deal with, and our own city fields. Uh, yes, we have uh, water rights down at Railroad Park, but again, it's just like we talked about it on the commercial side. They see us watering, how are we going you know, to leave our own water out of the river? They get the water, or city water, we don't, so we have to. We have to watch that very carefully to make sure uh, we do not violate our own water. Oil and gas drilling uh, in production. This is one thing that we're working on currently is to see how we can uh, conserve more water in this process. Currently, we do not have uh, any drilling activities. We have, have a few fracking activities that are continuing, which is my knowledge. This is about finished, is my understanding. And then continue the education on landscape alternatives, planning, uh, types of irrigation systems, et cetera. Continue on with conservation plan. I, again, I've shifted back from emergency management to conservation. And again, clarify the difference. Uh, we are at a single rate per thousand gallons. You pay a fixed rate. Uh, that's your okay, meter based component for the first 2,000 gallons. More than the eight dollar range, I may be off just a little bit, but then you have a cost. Everything above two thousand gallons is a cost per thousand, which is about three dollars and twenty eight cents. So, if a person that uses six thousand gallons on, on an average month, you pay that. You got to irrigate twenty thousand gallons, it pays the same rate. So, the increasing block rate or seasonal block rate means that you have different rates or blocks of water cycles uh, with an increasing cost. So if you're using from six to go ahead and finish the mountain. You had if let's say you set your base at six thousand gallons, anything from that point would be three to twenty eight. Anything from six thousand to one gallon to fifteen thousand gallons would be three fifty or four dollars a thousand gallons. And you increase that up and that is a controlling mechanism for this will be now. Sir, no, 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 no. do not be a single rate. A flat rate. That's, that's what I hey, I'm just glad that they don't charge me more per gallon of gas over 10 gallons when I fill up my tank. Look, you know, I, I, I we should charge what it costs to do a gallon of water and keep the rate. I, I'm, I don't really like the increase per thousand and increasing the rates. You pay for what you use. And you know that's it. To punish someone because they want to buy more is uh, sounds currently well, as Russian to me. Well, it's not. And here's why: um, it does cost oh, more. Right. It, 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 the, the higher the demand we have as a system, it does cost more. It costs you more because somebody else uses more water. Yeah, and that's the rate we should be charging for now. That's an increasing block rate. We also charge well. That's that's what it would. The people when you have somebody that's using massive consumption. It drives up the capital costs associated with having to provide that supply compared to a normal supply. And so basically, the flat rate is subsidizing the high user. 
because of those increased capital costs. A true, if you want to have a true cost of what it, it is based on your actual consumption, an increasing block rate is the way to do it. I just, so otherwise, you're subsidizing a night user. Then I guess we subsidize people who have uh, you know, 40 gallon gas tanks versus 10 gallon. But the thing is, what no, I'm one of what you well, buy is what you use. Well, that's and, what I'm saying. And, and, and quite frankly, you shouldn't. Eat. You might want to think about that because if somebody uses the roads, if they use the roads proportionally more, they wear out the roads proportionally more. So maybe they should pay a higher rate. They pay the gas but I subsidize their roads. They pay the gas tax rate. They pay more tax for gas. The, the thing is that I just want to let you know that I read this. No, do we do charge more for commercial versus residential? No, it's just all the same rate. All the same rate. Except the only difference is your meter size. You have a different meter, or your first 2,000 gallons based on your meter. The state of Texas, so that's not a water, a, 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 let's say a single woman widow out there, has no yard. She's on a fine benefit plan of Medicare. She uses, let's say she uses a thousand dollars, I mean a thousand gallons of water a year, a, a month. If everybody used a thousand gallons of water a month, everybody did, their water rate would be, we'll say, I mean, you know, would be ten dollars. But because John over here uses 20,000 gallons of water a month, we have to buy more water. So our water goes up. And now this lady here, now the price, instead of being $10, is $15. And this same poor woman over here that's only using 1,000 has to pay $15. So that this guy's using 20,000, his rate drops down and her rate goes up. You know, you know, you know, you right. So she's not paying for what she's using. She's helped paying for what he's using. Where does this stop? Let me try to describe what you just said. Pay for what you use, but that's not what happens. The thing is, is that are we going to start supplementing because she uses so many gallons of gas and somebody doesn't? Because her cash. We, we don't sell gas. Whatever, gas, yes, whatever. Yes. It's the slippery slope. Do we do that for everything? Our, our general philosophy no, in our financial sure. policies is that the we try to structure our rates for things like this, where the the rates are uh, based on the user's costs to the system. We have not done that historically for utility rates. We have the flat rate. Uh, and the way utility rates work, there's lots of different variations on this. You can actually have separate customer classes. You can segregate your demand into the high users that generate those high capital costs and high operating costs because of the amount that they use. And set up a separate rate for them. That's what set up a separate rate for the low guy. You can set up a separate rate for the middle guy. You can set up a separate rate for commercial versus residential. An increasing block rate is kind of a hybrid approach to those where you're kind of still blending all your, your customer classes together. But regardless of whether commercial or residential, the more they use, the more the rate becomes. Also, and uh, again, the primary purpose for that, there's already the only one purpose for that, other than if you want to make the, the fairness and cost argument, the other one would be to conserve water. That's the other reason to do it, because it tends to drive the demand. The fairness and cost is just conservation water. And it's also a lot easier to manage than the class unit. Multi-class thing, and we will be looking at what Mr. King talked about the multi-class and, and you dedicated, as well as as the increasing block rate for everybody. So yeah. there, we, we will be looking. There is a study that we're recommending to do. We're bring this office to bring the market finance to do a rate study and look at those options. And to kind of describe utility rate making in an extreme sense, let's say you have two users, a grandma. That being described in a bottling plant. Grandma uses uses uh, you know 160 gallons a day. The bottling plant uses 3.5 million gallons a day. You have to build a system to supply them both. Well, 99% of your system costs are over here with this guy, and 1% over here with grandma. And a flat rate, you charge them both the same, regardless of how much. Everybody. Yeah, you treat everybody the same. Everybody's but in the whole system. system. Was there. It's water. It's everybody. Yeah, sure did. Right. So we we don't try to distinguish between yeah. customer classes. Yeah. All right. Yeah. If we have if we have one user right now, we're at our maximum. You said we're buying 
I mean, without buying it. Well, but, but I mean, at our national, we're buying what we're buying right now. What, we, what are we buying right now? Well, I'm talking about peak, peak or north. 29. 29. 29. Peak. Okay, and you just said that we have to go up and if we go over that, we're going to have to buy another bill, another MDD, which will cost us 200000 So if we had one user that came in and caused us, that he started using tons of water, he cost us about an additional one MDD. Everybody else cuts back, but there's one customer coming and cost us to go over that. Then everybody, it's going to cost everybody sharing that $200,000 increase instead of just this one customer. Everybody's going to have to share a pay for that. No, we're not giving a discount. That's what I'm saying. By the way, there is such a thing called decreasing water rates, <coughs> which you have in some cities, and especially when you get pressure from a, a Dr. Pepper, <coughs> not Dr. Pepper, but no, Dr. anybody, where, where they say, hey, you know, we need a discount rate. We're buying in, in bulk. <coughs> so you have a decreasing water rate. The more you use, the cheaper it is. I hear what you're saying. Yeah, that's a different philosophy. In there, you're actually acting like a wholesaler. Cheaper to, uh, and, and, and all of this is set up toward what we feel the state, the state has mentioned. The state of Texas is the one that issues the requirements for all the different regions and setting their per capita and how per capita goals and how you're going to reach those goals. One of the top strategies in that is increasing flock rates or tiered rates. And they haven't placed it in the statute yet is mandatory. I told Mr. King and, and several times that I expect that to, I thought it would have already been done, I expect it within the next two sessions, is that they will require every city to go to an increasing high block class rate. And, uh, and that the method is, is control use. Is this block for the street that you guys are looking at going to raise the average homeowners? Until we run them up. It, it might not. If that low end user, if we can put the cost upon the high user, might go for the bad, might yeah. decrease. Yeah. Yeah. Average 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 the average. 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 Might Good. decrease it for the average. Yeah. average. 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 I, mean, I mean, you're really going to lower the price per gallon of water. It's the might. Yeah. 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 If you have a if you have a structure that's in place all year long, now seasonal block rates are a little bit different. You can have a seasonal block rate that's only in place for a temporary time. Do you have an annual block rate where your high end users are using more than your low end users will, or the high end users are paying more than your low end users are probably pay less? So, our recommendation on the conservation plan is prepare that rate model that we just talked about. Look at those structures, look at what we can do, and bring that back to you. Phase one is the development of that in 2012. Look at the targets. Look at reductions by or consumption reductions by class. Phase two is consider implementation of those increasing block rates or block rates over a three-year time frame, so we don't have basically a shell shot from uh, an implementation of the rate. How that how that works, I don't know. That's what we've got to do some research on. Uh, we've not, or I've not seen a, a three-year implementation rate. It's doable. I think it's, it's functional. A lot of times, most of the cities, especially around here, just drop them in on the customers in one year. I think the three years gives our citizens the ability to start learning how to control their irrigation practices and not putting it, it into effect and, and hammering them with what you can do. And then, uh, again, you go back and read the conservation plan, and it's a it, that is nighttime reading, and y'all will just mm -hmm. get by without reading something. That one is. Help you get to sleep. Uh, uh, again, uh, non promotional rates we talked about for the high volume, volume use, but also the oil and gas drilling production. We're looking at rates there, how that will affect. This model will help us in that, or in that uh, determination. And reuse 
a tree to death one from our wastewater treatment plant. Yes. Should oil and gas possibly be under management and not conservation? See the next slide. Yeah, this research, uh, there's one more. <coughs> Here's your emergency management recommendations. And we're going to address your question is that last bullet. Yeah. Basically, uh, we'll work down to that on implementation stage two, I expect in April. Uh, prepare commercial percentage reduction. That is an option. I said it is a recommendation that may be something you want to do or, or we try to go without it first and if I have to bring it back later in, in, the, in the year we can do that. Many ordinances regarding temporary rate increases uh, by adding all customer classes. If you read the ordinance right now, it only addresses residential. So we need to do an ordinance amendment to put it in all places. Uh, and then Councilman Vaughn is talking about a possible amendment to oil and gas order regarding its use for fracking during the emergency water management four stages and looking at their rates, how they, how they work. It. We'll do that rate review during our rate model discussion. You also have them listed under conservation. What did you have in mind for conservation? Oil and gas. Conservation there, there's really green base. It's a rate base, but it's also looking for Right now, when they do fracking operations, they take that water and deep well inject the waste. Is there a mechanism out there in the system? Have they talked about, can they look at taking that wastewater that they're well injecting now, treating that water and using it again for additional frack purposes? We can't put it back in the system, we understand that, but can it be treated in some mechanism that's a long-term theory. Look at it, see what we can do. Work with the oil industry <coughs> and see if they can talk about. It. And on top of that, city manager said it's a money. Well, you, uh, the, the simplest draw. way is to have some sort of again a, a rate-based approach, much like we were just talking about for the high-end user. You just have a separate customer class called. Uh, whatever you want to call it, and they have a higher rate than that today. And so theoretically, it would encourage them to drive down the demand. Practically, that's unlikely. They'll just pay whatever it costs. And so I, I don't know that that's a real effective way of doing conservation for the for that particular user. Uh, well, when you have you know, five kids, they don't need a bath. You know, you're going to use the water. Use the water. Right. Same thing for the throw lady by yourself, you might not get you your cats. But you, you got a well and you just invested a couple million dollars in it, you need to frag it, they're going to deliver the, the partially treated water to any user, including if oil and gas was going to use uh, not water out of the fire hydrant, but water through that warehouse. Yeah, where, where would that, how would that go? There's two mechanisms for that. One, uh, the council put in place, I should put it Council put in place the sale or the ability to sell three to half one of the 50% of the cost of retail water sales or water cost. Two ways to do that. One is that they can truck the water, which is probably not their best method because they use so much water. They can come down to the wastewater treatment plant. We would have to build a pump station and go every point. They load up the trucks, put their credit card in. Pay X number of dollars per thousand gallons and ship it by truck to the site. What we've seen in certain cities is, especially there's one in Denton, and uh, it's basically industry related, and I believe they have a place for oil and gas practice in Gainesville, I believe, is where they basically can pipe it to the wastewater plant. They construct a building pump station from their effluent side of their plant. And literally a reused pipe from that point to the site. So they're frack pond or the whole pond. Are they doing that on every one of them or just when they're going to have a, a large number within a certain area? They'd have to do it. I'm sure they would do it with a large number of certain area. I don't think they could do it for a single well because it cost a bit at that point. Is there any way they can take it right out at the sewer somewhere? At the sewer? No, because it's not treated unless. I believe they have to use at least some type of clean water and it would
would be out there. That could be filtered at that point. Or not I'm not saying it's this. I don't know. We have to research that. I'm sure somebody already has. Yeah. The, the problem would be is, is what you do and filter it, what do you do with the screen? What do they do with the screen? Would it be a mini plant or a sewer line somewhere? We did the filter, and there's also a lot put into fracking to uh, control bacteria. Yeah, okay. Okay, city usage. Uh, uh, we have irrigation costs and full being general fund. And then this is one thing we have to, that we monitor. Mr. here does a good job of trying to keep the water usage down. Uh, we that cost over several budgets. Increased restrictions on city uses again under our dry management plan, emergency management plan, and then the summer demand reductions can result in less revenue. Again, we talked about that uh, for our CIP, uh, line maintenance, et cetera, and more reliance on the debt if we have to do the replacements. We talked about this enforcement, first offense, uh, verbal written warning, second and above the citation. So you can change that from first being a warning, you know, first being warning, the second being the uh, written warning, the third being the uh, actual written citation. Here are the types of block rates that you can use. These are the categories that we have in place on our building structure. And if you look at 39, at the very back of your uh, presentation, you'll see a information sheet. Uh, it's 11 year average, it's at the very top. Give you some information. Council Durham, this goes back to your question of what is our, our usage, our split on our usage in 6040. And I tie apartments. Apartments are considered normal commercial in our industry, but in this particular item, I wrote apartments and single family residential together. And uh, so you look at uh, calendar year. 2011, and this is the third group of numbers down. We're looking about 60 percent uh, on the average of the water usage that went to residential and apartments. And then you, you've got your uh, uh, commercial is, is in the 11 and 12 percent range. 11 year average was close to 14. So again, most of your is on the residential side as it relates to irrigation and quantity of water. Uh, assuming the, the drought goes away right now, but we have a normal summer. At what point, assuming build out to 111,000 in 15 years or whatever it is, uh, how many, what steps are we going to have to go up to the next million gallons a day? From the 29 or whatever it is. Basically, it would be, we have a normal summer. Then, as the demand, as the population grows, <coughs> you're looking at the population growth as we get closer to that on a normal uh, winter average demand, that's when we would know, okay, in the summer, if we increase uh, a million gallons during the winter month, the, the winter month average, most likely you expect that we would need to increase that demand if we stay with a realistic 140 gallons per capita per day, including irrigation. So to answer your question, is it a, every other year, or just based on what that population load and that demand load would be? If I bring a new industry in tomorrow, or you've got an area from the group bringing a new industry in that is a water user, a bottling company, that changes to, to, to an automatic and you have to work again on the rate. You go longer. Right. Last time the increase was 2000. 2000? Right. Increased what? Our treated water. Sorry. Our treated water went from, in, back in 2000, we increased 1 million gallons. Uh, went from 8 to 9 million gallons at that point on the treated water side. We've been able to control it through that time. Now, there's been two changes there. We went, we had a plant expansion, and then we had the plant re rated which gave us that cushion with the plant. That's the plant. We do the treatment. We do the treatment on the, on the untreated one. So is it the plan that we would continue? How far more can we go where we treat the water? I'm 
just to try that to will be the next plan expansion that's in the five year program. I mean, it's in the 10 year program from about 2016 to 2017. <coughs> so we're about topped out right now. Yes, sir. We are topped out at okay. During peak periods, right. During this this time, we're trying to use as much water as we can from Dallas on that 9 million gallons. Our average is what, 13? Winter average. Winter average is about 13. So we've got nine, we're pumping about four from the plant. And it takes about two to three million gallons to keep the plant functional. If you go out there now, jump the bombs out, we had three or four bases down, and they were using one base to do the maintenance on the other. That's what we do during the normal time. Normal, okay. the normal time. I just wanted to tell everybody that uh, in the, when did we switch over to the nine water from Dallas? We, I'm sure you more. 1973. Yeah. Okay. Uh, six, treated water or, or planted, treated, either one? Treated water, where we weren't on well water anymore. 1973. Okay. Prior to that, there were times when you turned the faucets on, <laughs> and there, all you heard was just air. There was nothing there. So we've come a long way since then. And, and that's when there, nobody, there wasn't any people here to begin with. So uh, just to let everybody figure that out. When you turn it off, when there's nothing there, people go crazy. So, and it doesn't matter what it costs. You, you go get it. Like there's some towns right now that are trucking water in. Because they're gone. They're tempted. Everything is gone. Yes. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. For that's right. No, I didn't know if you're going to go through We've got city breakdown, <laughs> domestic <laughs> irrigation. Defined. Last two lines. And there's city breakdown in one section. But this is, this, these were. Are you going to talk about it? If not, I was just going to know. Uh, either one. Uh, basically, the city breakdown was where uh, the last uh, three line items was what we were doing. Our domestic means our, our building, our irrigation, or basically the power of irrigation meters. That's okay. what we used. Now ozone, are you retrofitting the existing, or is that still chlorine? 
So it's the reason the expense is because you're retrofitting the home. Okay. You still you still will use chlorine. You still have to have chlorine in the distribution side. But it's basically a better treatment. Also eliminates a lot of patient odor. That's called flavor. Station. Mean the fish. Midway pump station is currently under construction. It's probably about 60, 70 percent. What is it going to be? Operation. 
this year, 2012, and then public education on October 1 in regards to the possibility of increasing block rates in the summer of 2013, or in April of 2013. Um, the block rate model that you have, is it taking into account, because uh, right now we, we have basically, if you've got a bigger pipe coming into your facility, you, you have basically have a, a lower rate or a lower step rate, right? right? No, sir. It's all one rate. Are we paying the same? The three quarter inch pipe, the folks with three quarter tap have the same per. As far as volume costs go, there is a meter charge. A meter charge is the only difference. If you have a three quarter inch meter, you pay. Um, but that's only one time. That's only one. Yeah, that's, that's for the first two thousand the gallons and the cost of the water. But if you, once you get past that, you're charged the same exact rate. These are the things that we'll be looking at on as far as block rates and classes. Now, now, why do we change? I understand the cost difference between the meters, but why is there a different rate once the cost of the meter is taken care of? There is not a cost it's difference. It's always the same. It's always the same rate. You just said that. No, they, they just put the first 2,000 gallons, depending on your meter size, that's different. The cost of 2,000 gallons of water is the same cost of any other cost it's, of it's water. It's the same issue, John, of trying to allocate costs to users based on what their cost of the system is, their, their customer class. class. So if somebody with a big meter gets a bigger base charge. Base charge. Yeah, call it base charge. charge. Yeah. Yeah. So um, the base charge is quote, the first 2,000 gallons, but it's basically a, a structural charge that reflects the capital nature of capital cost of a particular user class to the system. And that's what everybody pays you right now, except for the meter size. They get a different rate. No, fairly no. Rest, you, yeah. we have a, all, all our rates are two-part. Everybody has a base charge and a volume rate. Even the residential customer has a base charge for 2,000 gallons based on a three-quarter inch meter size right. and, a, and a volume rate for everything thereafter. And all of our volume rates are the same for everybody. I understand that. Okay. Talking about the meters, aren't they bigger meters? Are they on the residential? Yeah. No, 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 no. That's where I was thinking yeah. we were charging different rates yeah. for commercial. Well, there's a higher base charge. Okay, yes. that's where I was. Yes. All right. yeah, so that's what I thought the it was. The base charge is higher for those users yeah. because of the higher meter size. Yeah. All right. It's kind of a, a mini tiered structure. I mean, it's it only kicks in on that very first 2,000 gallons each month. And really, you break the component down. First 2,000 gallons are based on that same cost for water. Mm -hmm. The rest of that charge is for yeah, the capital for that meter or the meter site based on that meter and the capital components of the system. It's yeah. a base charge. But per gallon, it's the same. Per gallon, it's the same. Uh, I need to clarify the one thing. This slide said great recommendation. This is our recommendation. If you all want to go to a block rate structure, if you want to focus on conservation as being a policy objective for the city, uh, this is kind of how we would go about doing it. Uh, we're not necessarily saying to go ahead and do an increase in block rate structure. The existing rate structure works fine for our purposes today. It may not accomplish all the goals that you might be interested in. But as far as just you know, generating the, the funds necessary to operate the system, it's doing fine. Uh, this is, again, if you want to add some other type of goal to your overall policy objectives, uh, one way to do that would be through this type of structure. Uh, we really, I really think that going through and trying to get the education out about conserving and the importance of it is the right thing to do. Yeah, maybe what you try first. Maybe so, another approach, you try that and see what kind of effects it has. Would it and, and in fact, it's, it would seem that it had some effect in the past because, again, our gallon per day consumption is far different than a lot of other places. Would it help prevent us from having to buy more water from ballots? Well, yeah, conservation is always going to... Which in turn would help keep the price of water from going up, correct? If we don't have to buy more water from ballots, the price of water is not going well, Dallas may raise per gallon, but our charge is not, our cost is not going to lower the lower capital costs and lower cost. Right.
we don't have a problem. But again, it's not the only way to do it. I mean, personally, like me, I'm, I'm not even going to come on. I'm trying to conserve. One thing we didn't address um, that uh, I had talked about with Don was uh, during, during the stage two or stage three is uh, no summer fracking. Um, and I don't want to extend this discussion today, but I'd still like to look at that. that I know that's what they've done, I think, in South Lake and Garland. And Garland yeah. What was it, Garland? One of those, Garland. Garland. Don't, 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 one of those, I think. Yeah, we, we we had a slide that kind of touched on that. Um, what we were looking at what we were looking at was really not so much linking that to the the uh, conservation or emergency management ordinance, but perhaps the oil gas ordinance is that. Well, and then that way it's kind of a condition of a permit right from the get go. That'd be fine. And there's some wording in there that needs to address uh, not trucking water in and not drilling wells. That will be yeah. that will be something that we have to be able to stay in well control that. But, but can't the city say the water has to come from the city? If you're fracking in the city, the water has to come from the city. That's I, I saw that. I, I saw an ordinance that you sent to me that way, and that I'm not sure we have to. Okay, we'll have to. Is that what it is? <laughs> Effectively, I'm not using 2,000 gallons, but I'm paying proportionally more, right? 
my effective rate is different at that first 2,000. Yes, yeah, because you're, you're paying the capital component of the meter and yeah. instructing the infrastructure. I, I'd like to look at that. In terms of what? In terms of it, it just, it's, it seems to me that we're loading more cost onto the residents proportionally. In, in that in that regard, mm -hmm. not necessarily no. meter sizes. Again, the meter sizes. Uh, I'm still paying more per gallon than the first two thousand as a resident than the guy with the bigger meter. No, probably not. Not, not on the first, first two thousand. No, not especially. especially not the first two thousand. Okay. All right. I'll. I'll it's also meant for people that have a meter, get a bill, have all the rights involved in that, but then don't use it. A rental property that they've cut off for a while. But you still want to have water service there. So when you do show up, there is a cost involved in that. Okay. You've got to have somebody come out and read it. However, we do it. I think I may have a side no conversation with you on this. And a lot of times, on, on just like capital recovery fees, it's based on is that meter can float 21 gallons, you know, 21 gallons a minute. And we use it or not. I have to have the system to do it on this. So, a lot of that charge is that base. Well, and, and not for here, we can have that yeah. education. Okay. Moving on with the, I get any other questions. Okay. Next. Okay. All right. Five minutes for the first.